The Stitch Trial by Durenberg, published in Lancet in 2050. Incisional hernia have an incidence of 10 to 23 percent, up to 38 percent in some groups. With four to five million laparotomies each year, it expected about almost half a million incisional hernias. Incisional hernias are associated with pain, discomfort, and decreased quality of life. It is estimated that almost 400,000 incisional hernia repairs will be done in the United States with a cost of over $3.2 billion a year. In 2019, Milburn provided a prospective randomized control trial of over 700 patients with small bites, 5 to 8 millimeters, that demonstrated decreased incisional hernia. In 2015, the European Hernia Society published guidelines for closure of the laparotomy, stating that running with a large tissue bite, approximately one centimeter, was associated with incisional hernia. This set up for the hypothesis to compare the classic large bite versus small bite for facial closure of the midline laparotomy. To answer the question, they created a prospective multicenter double-blinded randomized control trial in 10 centers in the Netherlands with inclusion criteria of anyone greater than 18 years of age undergoing elective abdominal surgery, general surgery, vascular, GYMB, and midline laparotomy. Exclusion criteria were anyone with an incisional hernia, history of fascial dehiscence, recent laparotomy, or were pregnant. The patients were intraoperatively randomized in a one-to-one -one via computer-generated sequence to either small bites of 5 millimeters every 5 millimeters with a tool PDS and a 31 millimeter needle versus large bites one centimeter by one centimeter with a double loop number one PDS and a 48 inch needle. They look at the number of stitches, the length wound, the suture length, its ratio with a goal of four to one or higher. The follow up was set up at one month and one year. Our patients were supposed to undergo physical examination and ultrasound or radiology. Quality of life assessments were created every trimester for the first month. The primary goal is the development of an incisional hernia favoring the small bites. Secondary goals were comorbidities, dehiscence, cardiac event, length of stay, and quality of life. And quality of life compared hernia versus no hernia, as well as small versus large bites. Over 600 patients were assessed for the study, randomizing 560, which was a higher than calculated number to provide a 80% power to detect a reduction rate of 50% that will account for a 10% loss to follow patients. The groups were similar with a slight higher incidence of COPD population in the small bite group. The wounds were of similar length. He took more stitches and more suture with a higher suture to wound length ratio and an average of four minutes longer in the small bite group. The majority of the patients were evaluated by clinical and radiological follow-up, as stated here. 21% of the large bite group developed an incisional hernia compared with only 13% in the small group. This carries out to be a significant statistical significance. There was no difference in the immediate and long-term complications or in the quality of life between the patients that developed a hernia or the patients between the large and small bite groups. In conclusion, small bites 5 millimeters with a 4 to 1 suture to wound length ratio is associated with less hernia. There is no difference in pain, morbidity, or quality of life. This is only applicable to elective general surgery. There were no emergency general surgery in this study. And the largest BMI is 27, so it cannot be extrapolated to the morbidly obese patients. Thank you.